President, how are you doing today? Since the beginning of this school year, I've many times greeted you in the hallway, how are you doing, Mr. President? And you say, just fine, Father President. One of these days, we need to get our Professor President of the Senate involved in it for all of us together. Thank you for your leadership of the student body this year. Thank you even more for your constant joy, for showing us your smile so many times. But I have to tell you, I will be missing some of the presidential addresses in the future. I sometimes get the echo of what a presidential campaign might look like in Haiti when you give us one of your, thank you everyone, it's good to have you here. Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you, actually, Mark. It's good to have you here. Congratulations on your graduation. What makes Andrew attractive at first encounter is the visual paradox that he appears to be. A tall, burly body with a kind, welcoming smile. In fact, his sense of humor is hard to outdo. He can laugh at a joke three times. First, when you tell him one. Second, when he tells it to another. And third, when he at last understands the joke. Once you engage him in a longer conversation, you discover the fascinating life story that he is. He hails from a family with eight siblings, two sisters and six brothers. Such a large family is totally untypical in communist China, where the one-child policy has been reigning since Mao Zedong and is by now a widespread popular practice. In other words, Andrew's heroic parents have chosen to be counter-cultural Chinese citizens because they prefer what their Catholic faith teaches to what a communist regime commands. What finally makes him an endearing friend is his super generous character. Whatever he has, he offers and shares. I often make him the butt of my jokes, and when he can no longer laugh with others and me, he directly but mildly expresses his annoyance. All I need to do is to wink at him as plea for apology, and then he winks back and generously forgives. It is this generous character of his that keeps him committed to his religious vocation. As he once explained to many in the chapel, I want to become a priest because of the lack of youth in China who are willing to offer their lives as spiritual shepherds among my people today. Andrew is truly one in a million. Well, you have asked me about how, when, and uh, you know, uh, I'm very fond of him. He was one of the first students I met here, and he introduced himself to me, and uh, he's been in a class of mine, and uh, he is, um, you know, he, he is a true scholar. He is someone who respects learning. I always I think of Confucianism and Confucius great respect uh, and promoting uh, the gentleman, the gentleman who respects learning, who seeks to learn, who respects other people, who is friendly, who is balanced. Um, Hawin is one of those gentlemen, 
and he's also um, a scholar, as I mentioned. He takes his studies very seriously. He's thoughtful. He's inquisitive. He works hard at learning, and uh, and again, he's just such a he's just such a fine man. Uh, I think uh, a great deal of him. Who, whatever ministry he exercises in the future, is going to be uh, well served, well served, and well done. Um, I will miss him when he moves on, um, but he is really. Uh, a very fine student, and I think of him as a friend as well. Um, I had the privilege to uh, have Sister uh, Cecilia in class uh, for two semesters and a summer. Uh, she is a bright and insightful student, uh, and she works very hard. Uh, as a, as a religious, she is very uh, faithful and dedicated. Uh, and I think as a, a, a Cameroonian, uh, she is very loyal and patriotic. Uh, I think overall, she, uh, Cecilia, is, uh, she loves life. Um, if you ask me of a, a, an image for Sister Cecilia, I would say the pine cone. Uh, she protects life. The pine cone protects life and um, generates life in many different ways. Um, Sister Cecilia, uh, uh, we are very happy to have your presence here at DWC during the last two years. And uh, we wish you the best as you uh, go on to further your studies. Um, we will miss you and we believe that you will do well in uh, whatever awaits for you in the future. Um, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity uh, to get to know you. Bonjour le monde. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, introduce to, to you a very special friend, a person who is very skilled in sport, particularly in soccer. Um, he's a person who is very friendly, responsible, uh, humble, and respectful. Uh, guess who? David Concho Imon. It's a blessing for me to be part of his uh, formation journey here at the Bible College. When he first came here as a from uh, members of the Galatian, he has uh, consistently impressed me as a person of character, a person of good heart and kind heart, very clear, with a clear and strong sense of direction and motivation. He's the type of person that I could count on to go an extra mile to help others and to make others feel ho at home and accepted. I still remember um, my first interview with him. He expressed his struggles with uh, strange food and people of different cultures and most of all English. But what an amazing to see him accomplish so much today. Not only uh, overcoming the ob obstacles he encounters but also demonstrating his competence and, and ability to live and to, to work well with everyone in the communities. That is the spirit of missionary that I find in Concho, being with the people. So proud of you, Concho, and well done. As you continue to move on to the next stage of your formation, a new journey may bring you both challenges and chance. I wish you all the best, and I pray that you continue to carry on your missionary spirit to snatch the chance and beat the challenges, uh, opportunities. Uh, Remember, you can always find home here at the Highwood College. You can count on my prayers and support and the support of these communities. Once again, congratulations on your graduation. Thank you. I'm fortunate to be able to say a few words about our Francis Wambua. Francis is an example for us of somebody who has continually searched and listened for the call of God in his life. He first heard this call when he was in Kenya, where he was born. 
And that call brought him all the way over to Jamaica. And then from Jamaica to Antigua. From Antigua up to Iowa, to DWC, right here in uh, the USA, and from where he earned his bachelor's degree. And then from Iowa all the way down to Trinidad, where he uh, is now studying theology in order to become a priest for the Diocese of Basseterre and St. John's in Antigua and St. Kitts. So, our Francis has traveled widely from Kenya all the way to Iowa and then down to the Caribbean. And his travels have helped him to have an open mind and heart for peoples and cultures. In fact, while he was here in DWC, I noticed that it was easy for him to form friendships and to relate to people and even to have intimate friends across cultures. And I would say that those who were fortunate enough to be a close friend of Francis were very fortunate because they always had a sincere, trustworthy, adventuresome, and fun person to have to be with. Francis was able to add color, vitality, joy in his relationships. While Francis was with us in his junior year, he was sports coordinator here at Divine Word College. And there he showed a lot of enthusiasm and responsibility for this ministry. In fact, he would have liked to share this enthusiasm with all of us. Enthusiasm for sports, enthusiasm for exercise, enthusiasm for competition. Maybe he was a little disappointed in our response, but he did a good job of trying to share this enthusiasm. I feel sure that Francis will make a very dedicated and even holy priest. The people in the Diocese of Bastyr and St. John's are really fortunate to have him as their priest. I'm sure he will serve the people there with dedication, with love and care. And so Francis, what I would ask you is just keep your heart and mind wide open to receive God's love into yourself and then to share it with all those you serve. What has impressed me about Tung Tran over the past few years here at Divine Word College is number one, his artistic talent. If you were to go downstairs in the lower uh, hallway where there's an exhibit, uh, 10 of the pictures were done by him. If you were to go up to the art room, seven of the paintings are done by him. He's a prolific and very talented painter, but more so he's really a man of service and as well. Uh, I know firsthand because he was my assistant for a full semester after I had surgery and broke my leg and was in a wheelchair. Uh, he took care of me. He got me in my room in the morning, took me to chapel, took me to the dining room, took me to my office, took me back to the chapel, back to the office, uh, iced my legs, and it uh, was, was incredible. You couldn't have asked for a better assistant so much that I called him my guardian angel. But more so, it was just his, his good spirit, his constant good mornings, good afternoons, nice to see you. Uh, really happy he's applying to the division. Good morning. I was asked to talk about what impresses me about Father Wilfred. And the very first thing that I can say about Father Wilfred is his smile and his openness and his kindness to others. It was immediate from the first day I met him. That's the way he's always been. And it's so deeply appreciated by everybody at Divine Word College. When I think about Father Wilfred, he did a writing assignment for us, and he has some quotes that I think directly express why I'm so impressed with him. And the first quote, let me read it to you. I found them and myself. It's a very small quote, but it's true. 
Father Wilfred has been open to learning from different people, from different cultures, from different languages, and he's helped them find themselves as well. And it's been a pleasure to see. Another quote that is really startling for me is, I am helpless, I am a limited human. Father Wilfred is very humble and he understands what he needs to learn. He understands what he needs to grow and he's very humble and takes the help from anyone who gives him assistance. And I think this is a very difficult for most people to do and Father Wilfred is absolutely a shining example of what it means to ask for help when you need it. And the third thing that impresses me the most about Father Wilfred comes from this quote. Believe that other people have their own talents. Be aware that there are hidden talents waiting for the proper time. He understands that people have talents of all different kinds and that he waits for those to grow and mature and blossom and his talent has done the same thing. So Father Wilfred, using your words, I'm happy to say it's been a pleasure to know you and you impress me every day. I'm very happy you asked me about Sister Trang. She's one in a million, and I'm glad to talk about her. She's somebody who goes above and beyond uh, for whatever the task is. If uh, you give her an assignment to uh, write a 10-item code of behavior from a novel that you're reading in a class, you get a five-page paper. I was imagining something about like this, and instead I got a five-page paper that justified and applied the code of behavior that she created. If you ask her to give you three discussion questions, she doesn't just give you three discussion questions, she puts them in a letter form and embeds them. Um, so she does a lot, but when she's weary or burdened, she never complains. I have never heard her complain. Uh, she always turns her energy to others and she's thoughtful of others. Uh, she's, she cares about you and how you are doing. She'll often come to my door and she just wants to say, how are you, just checking, and then she'll go away. Uh, uh, she's kind, generous, selfless, but she's, it's not just words with her. Um, she'll, sometimes when she comes to my door, she's got a question. She wants to know about Chicago style notes or MLA works cited. Maybe it's for a paper she's working on, but more likely it's for a paper someone else is working on, someone that she's tutoring, and she has a question that will help them. Uh, or she has a student who has a particular writing challenge and she's trying to figure out how best to help them. Um, those qualities make her wonderful to have in class. She's humble, she's quiet, she's unassuming, and she's listening. She's like a big sister, you may have noticed. Um, she's watching her classmates even if she's not looking at them directly. She has her eye on them. She's thinking about their learning and their character. And she's tough-minded. She doesn't let anybody get away with anything, not with any nonsense, but she's not obnoxious about it. She's, somehow she manages to be kind even in that, even when she's uh, criticizing. Um, she's deliberate and nurturing and patient always. She'll, she'll be in class and she won't say anything for a long time. She'll just be thoughtful and silent. Uh, sometimes I notice she for a long time lasting from one class to another class, from one semester to another semester. She's just taking something in and observing. And then she may offer some constructive advice to a classmate or to me uh, with a smile and with a few challenging words. Um, she is a very incisive thinker. Um, most of the time, as I said, she's quiet. She's thinking and she's thinking independently, um, especially then with her questions. She'll let you have a whole new insight into something. When she speaks up, it's like, we've all been talk, talk, talking, and then she'll say something, ask a question, and bang. She's come in from the side, and she's gotten to the heart of the matter with a really elegant question. Um, she speaks with wisdom, and often she, in just her quiet, firm, deliberate way, she's the voice of moral authority in the room. Yes, that's Sister Chang. Hello everyone. I would like to use three words, starting with letter C, to share with you something about Thich Nguyen. The first word is creative. He worked as the leader of the entertainment group for BSA two times. He did a wonderful job in organizing our picnics 
Lunar New Year celebrations and farewell parties. Whatever he did was great. He always gives me good advice when I come to him for suggestions. His creativity is great and gifted. The second word is capable. He can do many things. He not only has talents in cooking, dancing, hunting, driving, playing sports, organizing events, working with the sound system, but he also knows how to play guitar and piano. He studies very well too. What I admire him is that he is able to apply what he learns to real life experiences. The third word is caring. Living among us, we often call him our big brother because he really takes good care of us. He prepares meals for us. He cooks dry soup or chow in Vietnamese and gives us medicine when we get sick. If you go on a trip with him, you will experience how much he cares for others. I am blessed to have him as a brother. We will miss him, a creative, capable, and caring person. I wish him all the best for his future, and I believe that he will use his gifts to serve people generously. So, happy graduation, I think. I met Sister Mary Florence when she first came to Divine World College two years ago. Sister Mary Florence is from Kenya, East Africa. She belongs to Little Sister of St. Francis of Assisi. I still remember she was so happy to come here and receive a scholarship from the Society of Divine War, the SVDs. And since the beginning, I have noticed some great qualities in her personality. Most of the time, she seemed calm and quiet. But I think that behind her quietness, there is a hidden, a prudent person who has great capacity to deal with people. After some time living together in this community, we had time to talk, to share, and to study together. I found that Sister Florence is a smart, organized, and gentle person. She also has her principle of life and passion in doing her work. Many times when I need, I need um, her advice, she was always available for me, and she was willing to give me the best suggestions to surprise some difficult situations. And I'm not talking just about studying, but also in the spirituality and community living. She is very dedicated in her prayer life. He, she is very committed in her studies, and she is an example for me. I can say that she is a good sister and I consider her also one of my closest friends. In this special moment, I want to congratulate her for achieving her degree. I know that to be a student who is major in theology and minor in philosophy, one needs to work hard and sleep less, but Sister Flores made it. Congratulations, my sister. Thank you for your friendship and for your help. Uh, you are like a bright candle which offers light to others around you. So go out to the world and be a little light that always shines. Remember that God is always with you. As the prophet Isaiah says, a brush reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. Congratulations, my sister. Uh, who is Tuan? Tuan. I knew him since 2016. He was my batch mate or he was my group mate and we spent a good while, good while of time together doing all what he was to do. And coming to know Tuan, he has been a, he's a good, he's a good brother. He has journeyed with me from all those stages from Colossian, Ephesian, Romans and Agape. And we have, our, our friendship has grown a lot and we have done a lot of things together. And one thing I've learned from Tuan is a man, man who is very determined in doing each and everything asked to do. He's very committed in anything 
call it sports, anything to do at, in the house, anything to do for the community. He has been very committed. Not forgetting to call, to mention of his uh, leadership skills, which I've learned a lot from him because he is man who has been so nice in organizing each and everything. Most of the time, like as we call it in senior house, we always have our social every Friday and he makes it at least everybody to enjoy and feel he is at home and he enjoys what he's doing because of Tuan of his leadership. So I will say, Tuan, I will miss you. God bless you for your what you have done for us and especially to me. I have done with you and I will miss you. But again, remember, we love to communicate as often to continue our friendship. Departing from DWC is not the end, but just the beginning. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to say something about Sister Home. And for each and every one of us here, um, our presence is truly a gift for one another. And pretty much we can say about each and every one, but um, for Sister Home, I think there is a lot I can say, but for because of time, I'll probably have to say a little. And for me, Sister Hope, what impressed me about her was she is a um, very um, active person. Um, first of all, I will start from sport. She is very active and energetic. And I'm opportune to have um, a class with her. And being in class with her, I learned a lot from her intelligent, her sharing spirit and her contribution as well and I have had ministry with her and her spirituality her dedication and commitment to her ministry kind of like give me a whole sense of um, um, courage especially in my formation while doing ministry and another thing that impresses me about her was her personality she possesses personalities that is so contagious contagious in the sense that she is um she's very open she's generous she have this sense of humor and she's very welcoming and i really appreciate that of her and her role especially here in the college as the vice president of the student senate for me she um someone who likes to be challenged and she is truly ready to take any challenge and I'm very glad for her role and she's very good and I'm really glad that she is here and truly we're going to miss her uh, in this college but it's really sad to see her go but the joy is that we see she's going somewhere where she will be working for the Lord and wherever you go sister home just know that um, God loves you and we love you so much and we'll continue to pray for you and continue to pray for us and hopefully after here we hope to meet again. Thank you and God bless. My name is Tom Lambert and today I just want to share of a unique person who has influenced my life, you know, and there's many reasons as to why I admire this person. His name is Hui and he was the previous, the former uh, student president of the student body. There are specifically three things that I want to share about Hui. You know, the first thing is his leadership. So what aspects of his leadership makes me very drawn to him? His ability to listen. His ability not to just merely listen to what I say, but to go in depth to be attentive, to ask questions, and to really see what is it that I am thinking. It moved me. You know, one time, I remember, it was, uh, it was like my second year here, uh, being here at Devon Ward College, and, uh, and I was having some internal battles, internal struggles. And, uh, and I came to Hui's room, and I was like, Hui, like, you know, what is it about me, you know? I just, I just wanna interact with, with other people, and you know, and he said, Tama, you already coming here is an acknowledgement of you taking a step forward. Wow. That in itself was very profound. Another crucial aspect about Hui that I, I admire very much is his ability to stay calm. 
He doesn't get mad. He's very aware of the person who he's interacting with. And lastly, what I really like is his ability, his ability to want to learn. You know, he's always continuously striving to learn. And that's one of the things he challenges me is to love learning and to never stop learning. Hui, you're an amazing person and God has great plans for you. And I'm so happy to hear that you're going to be an SVD. I pray for you that your discernment continues and that one day you and I may be celebrating Mass together. Brother, good luck. Thank you. Thank you.